hello friends welcome to my tutorial about uh, get and uh, today we will be uh, looking into tree tree architecture and git workflow uh, which for uh, which uh, git follows for its uh, um, implementation so uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's jump right into it and see what uh, it means so before uh, we go ahead let's uh, begin by looking at a typical two tree architecture which uh, other um, version control systems follow so this is what a, a lot of other version control systems use and uh, we uh, in this we have a repository and a working copy and those are uh, our two trees now we call them trees because they represent a file structure and uh, our working copy begins with the top of uh, our project directory and below uh, of that might be uh, four or five uh, different folders that have a few files in them so maybe a few more folders each of those folders have a few more folders in it so it's a uh, tree that's that's the why we call it is as a, as a tree and you can uh, imagine that if you map that out and that each of those folders would then branch out and uh, would look like a tree so that's why the name tree architecture so it really a directory tree whose trunk begins with the root of our project now the repository also has a set of uh, files in it and when we want to move files between the repository or the working copy we check it out from the repository into our working directory and when we finish making our changes we commit those changes back to the repository so it's like this so we check out uh, things from the repository and when we are ready to commit we put them back into repository so now those changes uh, they are saved and they are permanent on our uh, working copy and they and uh, but they are not yet committed to repository so many may uh, so my working copy may look different from repository but both are saved it's not like i haven't saved the files i have done that so they just aren't saved and tracked in version control repository now if a repository is a shared repository and there are many people working from it they may commit their changes to the repository and if i haven't checked out a copy recently uh, to get those changes then my working copy doesn't have their changes so once again the repository and the working tree will not have the same information in them so that's a typical two tree architecture so in git there is uh, git however has a three tree architecture it has a repository and a working copies but in between is there another tree which is the staging index so remember uh, when we did our first uh, commit in the previous video so we did not uh, just do a commit we did an add first and we added then we committed it was a two step process that add added our files to the staging index and then from there we committed to the repository now it is possible to go ahead and just commit directly to the repository and skip that uh, staging uh, step but it is important that you understand that this is a part of the architecture of git and it's a really nice feature because then what it means is that we can make changes to 10 different files in our working copy and then we can say all right i'm ready to make a commit but i don't want to commit all 10 of those I just want to commit five of these as one chain set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those on staging index and then to the staging index, get those files uh, ready to go. And as soon as I'm satisfied that they are ready, now I will commit those files in one chain set to the repository. And the other five files are still saved in my working tree, but they are never got added to the staging index or to the repository so they are sitting there waiting for me to make another commit to stage to stage those uh, changes and then commit them to repository and of course we can pull things out of the repository in the same way so it 
it's possible to pull them from the repository to the staging index. Let's see uh, to make it make more sense of this. Let's look at the Git workflow. So let's look at a workflow that one typically uses when working with those trees, uh, three trees. I think it's use helpful for us to have an illustrative overview first. So let's look at the process. First, we are going to work with just having a new file. So we have a new file called new file dot text. And now remember Git doesn't just work with single files. It works with set of files and it puts together into a chain set. So if you want, you can think of this new file as a bunch of files as a chain set together. But for now, we are going to be working with a single file to make the illustration simple. So we have got our three trees. Uh, we have got our working directory, the staging index and the repository. We are going to add a file to the working directory. And this is exactly what we did when we made our first commit. So we added a file to our working directory. We are going to call this set of changes as v1 just to have a simple reference for it. And when we call the git add command, what it does, it pushes uh, that set of changes that we have specified up to the staging index. So now the file.txt exists in the staging index as well. So you may notice that I am using git add with the exact file name. Uh, when we did our first commit, we did git add and I had a dot after it. A dot just says uh, gather all the changes that have been made to, the, to this entire directory and push all of them to the staging index. So I changed five files. It would have moved all fives to the staging index at the same time. Here I'm just adding a single file. Now, once I have got uh, everything in our staging index, exactly like we like it, we are ready to bundle it up and send it to uh, as a commit to the repository. And we use the git command that is git commit. So git commit will take that change a set of changes and push them to the repository so that now that file exists in the repository. It's there permanently. It's tracked and it has a commit message about the changes that we have made. That's exactly what we did when we made our first commit. So now let's look at uh, what happens when we make an edit to the file. So we got our same state as before. But we do multiple changes uh, with add and commit. And we have uh, version 1, version 2, version 3 all in our repository. So our uh, repository will have all the versions. So this is a typical Git workflow that we are going to follow. And uh, we saw before uh, if we use Git log, it would show us the sequence of those changes that would show us changes uh, v1, v2 and v3 that have been made over time. So this was about uh, Git workflow and uh, also the 3.3 architecture with Git uses. I hope you would uh, like the video and uh, if you have any comments, please do let me know and uh, do like and subscribe. Thank you.